Situated amidst green fields and gentle mountain slopes, the Lion's Head Mountain Scenic Area was once home to the Atayal and Saisiat Aboriginal tribes. The diversity of the area was enriched more than a century ago when Hakka settlers from mainland China began moving in and developing the region. This migration made Lion's Head Mountain a well-known mecca for Hakka culture. The scenic area spreads through several townships in Xinju and Miaoli counties. Now, let us drive along Provincial Highway 3 to the Lion's Head Mountain scenic area, which has long been known as a green mountain from another world. Our first stop is the township of Beipu, in the northern part of the scenic area. The Taiwanese and Hakka peoples began establishing their communities here more than a hundred years ago. Later on, the Hakkas came in especially large numbers, making Beipu their base for further expansion to the south. The Jingguangfu official residence in Beipu was used as an office for the promotion of development in those early days. Today, the house is listed as a first-class historic site. The most eye-catching of all the buildings in the old settlement is Qian Shui Hall, which is also the biggest structure around. This was the home of Beipu pioneer Zhang Shuluan. It is a traditional three-sided home with two courtyards and a gateway sporting swallowtail eaves. The inner courtyard is paved with stone slabs and equipped with an ingenious drainage system. The exquisite decorative carvings mark this as the home of an important family. A number of other historic structures are also dotted along the lanes and alleys of old Beipu. The new Jiang A residence, the Jiang clan temple, and the Zhongshu Hall, among many others. These buildings exert a peculiar attraction that was built up over long years of history. These clusters of ancient buildings give us a glimpse into the history of Hakka development, and the culinary culture here also provides a taste of the austere and industrious character of the Hakka people. Hakka food is salty, allowing it to last longer while also replacing the salt lost during arduous labor. One of the best known local delicacies of the area is ground tea, which combines the flavors of tea, peanuts, and rice pounded into a beverage that quenches the thirst and appeases the appetite at the same time. This tea, developed during their southern migration in China, is still used by the Hakkas as a major source of sustenance as well as a treat for guests. Another unique feature of the Hakka culinary culture is dried persimmons. Every October, when these fruits are peeled, sun-dried, and then air-dried, the streets of Beipu and Eme are permeated with the enchanting aroma of persimmons. Leaving Beipu, we can take Highway 37 to the nearby Daping River and the area's famous Cold Springs. Spring water wells from the riverbed at a temperature of 10 to 15 degrees Celsius, offering a cool and relaxing bath. To the south of Beipu is Mount Wujer, named for its resemblance to five fingers. Here, in addition to the beautiful scenery, you can enjoy leisure and recreational facilities as well. Traveling west along Provincial Highway 3, we soon come to the township of Eme. Once a major exporter of camphor, Eme has now switched to tea.
From early spring to the heat of summer, tea farmers are busy in their fields picking buds and leaves that have been bitten by leafhoppers. After careful drying and processing, this peculiar honey-flavored oolong tea is ready to drink. This tea is said to have been the designated drink of Queen Victoria, who gave it the name Oriental Beauty. Winding through lushly forested hills, Ume Lake is the scenic highlight of this area. Originally used mainly to supply water for irrigation, the lake and its clean environment now attract large numbers of birds. Flocks of egrets appear as flashes of white as they soar against the deep green forest background. The Shimaopu suspension bridge that spans the lake and the trail that winds around it provide a perfect opportunity for bicycling and hiking. <laughs> 